What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna shoot a video of this awesome kitchen. We're getting into some tips and tricks that I use for every single shoot to get the best results and make sequences that not only make sense, but they're also more engaging, easy to edit, and will get you consistent results. So thanks for joining, now let's get into it. When I first started doing these kinds of videos, I would go through every single room, always trying to come up with the most creative shots that I possibly could, which took way longer than it really needed to, and it puts an unnecessary amount of pressure on you for every single shot. So, with a more systematic approach, we're gonna take out the guesswork and make it a much more simple and efficient process. So what are we gonna do differently? First, Instead of thinking about every single shot as a cool, unique, creative, individual shot with cool camera movements, cool slow-mo settings, whatever you're into, uh, that's all awesome, but you need to start thinking about each shot as a piece to the entire sequence that you're making in a video. In traditional filmmaking, it's very common to use a three-act structure. And we're gonna be using this idea a lot, especially for part two of this video series where we'll be editing the sequence, but it's gonna really help you when you're thinking about the purpose behind every single shot. So act one, exposition. We're gonna be introducing something. So in this case, it's a room. Super simple. <laughs> act two, rising action, turning point, into act three. So in our video, that's gonna be detail shots, different points of view, alternate angles, and really just the middle part of the sequence. Act three is the climax and ending. So for this one, we're gonna use recap shots showing the wide angle of the room. We're gonna use transition shots moving on to the next room and leading us into the next sequence. This three-part structure can work really well as a mental checklist while you're shooting to make sure you get all the coverage that you need. So once I decide the purpose of the shot, then all the camera settings, the composition, the creativity follows. Okay, now that we're thinking differently about all of this, let's talk about workflow. So first I like to get wide shots showing both sides of the room. And then I like to get a few POV kind of like walkthrough shots. And then I'm good to go and that's it for wide shots. So once you get the wide shots, you gotta start thinking about how do you show the most important details in the most efficient way as possible to the viewer to where they can really focus on that and not be distracted. So I like to change my focal lengths and work a lot with 24 millimeters to get some kind of medium wide shots. Sometimes 35 is really good, but the real trick is switching to a 50 millimeter lens. It's like, the perfect focal length to where you're not zoomed in too much to where it's totally isolating just one thing, but you're close enough to where it feels kind of like you're there, but like a little bit extra dreamy and cool looking. So a few of my favorite detail shots to get with the 50 millimeter are sinks, the stove tops, the oven, uh, counter textures or cabinet textures if that's a fancy selling point or really just anything unique that catches my eye. These shots are really gonna break up your edit and keep your video the most effective and engaging way to deliver this information. So one extra note, if you're new to this, uh, I always go through the whole listing with one lens and then if I'm gonna switch to another lens, I will switch to that and rebalance my gimbal and all that stuff, then go back through the listing, get all my detail shots. Because switching lenses multiple times throughout your shoot is just gonna be wasting a bunch of time and nobody's got time for that. So <laughs> that's all. <laughs> So 
So all the stuff we covered so far is super important, but this last tip might actually have the biggest impact on the watchability of your final edit, and it is simplifying your camera movements. So in order to keep it simple and easy to watch, I like to go from left to right for almost like every camera movement, unless it's not an option. Using similar camera movements and movement directions really makes the viewer feel the most relaxed while they're watching your video. And this will help make your video easy to understand and it's gonna look as seamless as possible. Doing things this way will speed up your workflow and help you not overstress or overthink how to get a cool shot for every single shot. It doesn't always have to be super unique. The cool thing is really the house, hopefully, that you're shooting. <laughs> All right guys, now that we've got everything checked off our list, you got the wide shots, you got the detail shots, you got the camera movements that work well together, you can keep moving and go shoot the next important room or the next not important room and get just the basic stuff and you should be good to go. All right guys, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for being here. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on part two of this video where we're gonna edit this give you guys some tips and tricks along the way and all that good stuff. So as always, thanks so much for being here and I look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. Peace.